Now, grace and peace to you from God our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We get two rather different stories today. And I, you know, you see how it, this is a uh, technique that Mark uses all the way through his his gospel is he begins telling you one story and he goes so far and then he sticks another one in then he goes back and finishes the first one. And he does that all the way through his gospel. In fact, you can look and you, as you read the first four verses, it starts with the gospel according to Jesus Christ and it ends with truth, the Son of God and then it ends with the centurion saying surely this man has got something. And the whole rest of the gospel took place between those two places. He has a point he wants to make. That in Jesus, there is life. The story starts out, he's come across the Sea of Galilee again. You know, he's been there and back and back. He's been getting wonder if he ever touched dry land. And there's a crowd there. And he's beginning to think, how am I going to do with this crowd in Jairus? leader of the local synagogue, we don't know which local synagogue he was, comes and says, my little daughter is sick to death. And if you come, she can be healed. Now that is a statement of faith. It's not yet a statement of fact. Not a fact that it does it's a statement of faith. It gives us an idea of generous orientation to God. And so Jesus said, I'll be coming with you right away. He looks at Peter, James, and John and said, you guys come with me. And off they go. You know, the crap keeps going on. And he's walking along and all of a sudden he feels somebody reach out. Touch them fringe on his shawl. He feels power release. And he stops and turns. Who touched my clothes? Now you can imagine if you're that young lady, or I'm saying not young lady, middle aged lady maybe. You think, oh my goodness, I'm in trouble now. But it was worth to her whatever trouble there would be because the hemorrhages that had plagued her stopped quit went away immediately that's one of Mark's favorite words about how things happen in this life there is a miracle of people And then Jesus goes and says, Your faith is made well. God bless you. And turns to go on his way. And somebody shows up there. You stop. The little girl's dead now. Jesus said, I'm going anyway. And he goes and mourners. Now, in the first century, in that part of the world, there were people who were professional mourners. Would show up at a death and they would play sad songs and do sad hymns and weep and wail and stuff like that to know that somebody in the house would die. And they had already started when Jesus shows up. He said, Don't be quiet, I got stuff to do here. He goes back in the room and he says to the parents, She's sleeping, she's not dead. And he whispers those words to the cocoon and grabs him by the hand. And up she rises. And then it's told she's 12 years old. Now that's significant. I mean, how many people does anybody think of probably 12 million people times life for you to know? Because she's on the cusp of womanhood. Her next birthday, when she's 13, they have her not a barn that's probably heard of, but a baptism, which is for the girl. And we 
which they become an adult member of the community. And it would be expected in some world that within the next couple of years she'd be getting married. And if you made it to 18 and you weren't married, you was an old minister. Now y'all laugh, but that's the world she lived in. As a matter of fact, that's the world our ancestors lived in in this country with probably World War II. If you were 18 years old, unless you were away at school for some reason, and you had gotten married right there, there was something wrong with you. And so here she is, she's poised on the precipice of her adult life. And it seems, no, it doesn't just seem, she does die, let's be clear about this. If there's any uh, resuscitation for somebody that's in a coma or something, she's dead. And Jesus reaches out and gives her life and brings her back to life to live out whatever span of life she's going to get after that. It's a real miracle. Now I know that there are people who are not big on Christians and stuff. So how can you do it? You some miracles and stuff like that happen. Well, I just do. I do. I tell you, I can do it to my wife and I have a miracle. We were early married. We got married on June 1st in 1985. That's not remember what year it was so long ago. And in August of that year, we came back I would, well, in August, it was one of my year of internship. We got back in the next year, and um, she was pregnant. Now, we had tried to get pregnant, but, you know, as soon as we tried one time, we said, oh, you know, maybe we better hold off, because all of a sudden, jobs we thought we were going to have, we might not have. Too late. It was no need. Now, we were thrilled. And our jobs came through and stuff like that, and it was right. But somewhere in late November, early December, I came home from work. I worked three jobs in the center. I was uh, working on the maintenance crew. I was the chief total fetcher. Now, other than running a lawnmower, I didn't know how to do much. But I could go and pick stuff up and bring it back with the best of them. I was a teaching assistant for one of my professors, and I gave, gave guided tours to groups that came down to one of my the campus. So I came home one day, and Stephanie worked at the uh, highway department. I came home one day, and I thought to myself, you know, we're going to have to call our parents tonight and say, you know, we're not doing Christmas. We're not getting a tree. This must have had to be a we're not getting a tree, we're not giving gifts, and we just don't have any money. And I, I, I was headed home to my apartment to we live in. I stopped at the student union where the mailbox was were and got our mail, and it was a, what I thought was a Christmas card from the church where I served with the winter. So I didn't have my success card, and I opened it up, and there was a check for $165. Now apparently, they do that for every year for the end of the year. I didn't know they did that. I had no idea. I was really serious thinking. I'm going to call my mom and her parents and say, we can't give this one. We don't need to put enough tree. We don't have the money to do it. And then there was that $165 check. Now $165 today doesn't sound like it, but 40 years ago, that was real money. When my dad was a kid, they had real, real money. You could go to Newberry and get a pack of Nabisco crackers and a Coke for six cents. That's what he did for one kid. And so we, I told my wife, you know, I said, we can't go get the ministry now. So we went out to one of the places we did. We cut the place and it was cut out. You know, there wasn't much left standing up. There was a pine tree. For me, it was never what I wanted for the tree, but they had a pine tree. And it had a great big hole in the back of it. And I said, that's all right. It fit in the corner of our apartment just fine. 
สุญญาและเคยเป็นคนเป็นเป็นเป็น and for us that is a miracle ว่าเฮ้ยเมื Jesus in these two miracles today responds to acts of faith that people demonstrate. j a i u s comes and knows his daughter is on the verge of death, that she was going to die if nothing happened. Good for her, and he says, Jesus, please come. I know you can heal. And this woman who s in the crowd here. Heard about Jesus and what He does, and said, "If I can just get close enough to Him that I can reach out and touch the fringe of His garment, I can be healed." And in both cases, it happens. And in both cases, it's an act of faith. Jesus can do what's needed. I can't say exactly that here or I have the exact place, but I'm kind of giving up on it. It's the truth, but then there it is. God somehow gives folks the thing they need. A lot of times it's just a darn good God. You know, doctors are more miracles nowadays. It's unbelievable. Um, I can remember when I was ten years old. If you got cancer, you were dead. That was just it. You were dead. What do you think about it? That was sixty-three years ago. Cancer、um, wasn't good now. And now, for a lot of cancer, we got three high survival rates. We have techniques, and drugs, and treatments and stuff that people couldn't even think about that. Sixty years ago, before they even had the concept of a cell phone, they were thinking, "Wait a minute, that thing would be too far." But you know, in 1966, when Star Trek, Star Star Trek began, they had handheld communicators. That was cell phones, though. All they were. It took us a while longer to figure out that we could make it.、Um, you know, the first big major computer we knew that occupied something like two thousand square feet. You know, they didn't have semiconductors. They just had the same kind of tubes that you had in the back of your TV. I can remember. I'm old enough to remember when you had TV repair shops and they could fix it, and you didn't just crash and buy a new one. God, Mark shows us, is a God who cares for us, a God who works for our health, our health, and looks to do good things for us. Book of Lamentations that we started with today was written either by Jeremiah or by Baruch. And what he is a man who answers. He never gets bored. Man who answers is a big long word that means this guy writes everything down for me. So in case you weren't sure what that was, that's the guy who writes down everything for me. And so we're going to. And as we read today, was written following the first deportation of Israelites from Jerusalem to Babylon. And yet, as much as there is weeping and sadness and lamentation, there is in the passage that we read today hope. So I like to believe, and I think it's true, and I would encourage you. When God is involved, there is always hope. Always. So I live as a hopeful person. I encourage you to do it too. You might get disappointed on occasion, but I can tell you there's a whole lot happening.